Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we glorify His sublime name, we ask Him to send blessings and salutations and peace upon the best of creation, our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his family and companions and followers and folk until the end of time, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. That one of the descriptions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah ta'ala has revealed about him is hadithun alaykum, is that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is avidly uh, eager and avidly concerned for you all. Harisun alaykum, azizun alaykum, amittum harisun alaykum. That the Prophet ﷺ had a profound, unimaginable, indescribable concern for his community ﷺ that stemmed and emanated from the love and mercy that he had for the community ﷺ and ultimately the global community. His concern and love was for all of creation ﷺ. And so when we read the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. we have to read it in this light, in this light. And it was, it is illum an illumination that allows us to see some of these meanings at a deeper level. So that the Prophet Wasallam, out of his immense concern for us as he taught us three paths of destruction. The Prophet Wasallam taught us Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah relates the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, ثَلَاثٌ muhlikat That there are three things that are utterly destructive. They are innately pernicious, and ever pernicious, and always pernicious, wherever they are. And he continues, ﷺ, enumerating these three things. He says the first one, شُحٌ muta, Stinginess that's obeyed. Stinginess that's obeyed. Every nafs, every soul, with the exception of Prophets والسلام, those that are ma'asum, infallibly, infallible, out of protection from Allah Azza But for the rest of us, our souls have an innate shuh. You know, what's part and parcel of our souls of our is, is the ego. The ego is part and parcel of our souls as human beings that are non-prophets. And this is why the term in Arabic, in our classical tradition for the soul, nafs, the same term is used for the ego itself, nafs, depending on the context, in different connotations of the same word, because it's such a part of us that it's as if we are that thing. And so shuh is innately in the souls of non-prophets. But the task of the believer is to not obey that shuh, to not obey the innate stinginess of the ego, the egotistical tendency to say, mine, me, myself, mine and not wanting to share, and not wanting to serve, and not wanting to do things for others, not wanting to sacrifice one's time, not wanting to sacrifice one's energy, not wanting to sacrifice the gifts that Allah Ta'ala has given us for the sake of bettering others and not simply bettering ourselves. And so this destroys the individual, shuhun mutat, the first thing listed in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, out of his concern for us, that we avoid it is shuhun muta, is stinginess that's obeyed. And so what's the antidote? Prophetic generosity. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwad al-nas wa ahsan al-nas. That Sayyidina Anas relates the hadith, the description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the, Allah's Messenger was the uh, most generous of all people and the best of all people. He was the kindest of all people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we hear these descriptions time and again as we are uh, as we attend the you know the, the talks in the community and the mode celebrations and the Juma khutbah, we know these descriptions. But how do we interact with this tendency in ourselves? The second of the Muhlikat, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa hawa muttaba and uh, hawa, you know, stubborn whims, stubborn whim, uh, prejudice, biases, uh, follies that are obstinate, muttaba, that again are followed, that again are followed. And this is the sibling of the nafs. The nafs is concomitant with, concomitant with hawa, the hawa of the nafs. This stubborn, you know, when the person knows what's right, but they refuse to submit to it, which is one of the meanings, one of the definitions of kibr, according to the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ clarified, when he said that لا يدخل الجنة من من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من الكبر أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم in Sahih Muslim is a person with even 
a uh, zarra, you know, the, the zarra in the Arabic language is translated as, the, as a particle or an atom. But in the classical uh, Arabic, uh, the, the, the way it was used originally in classical Arabic, it means a newborn ant. The zarra is a newborn ant. The tiniest thing that the, that, that, the, that the person can conceive of. And so that much, even that much of kibr, of arrogance, a person will not enter paradise with that in them. And the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, a person likes to go out with a nice garment, with his nice sandals, and he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, No, Inna Allah Allah Ta'ala is beautiful, and He loves beauty. Allah Ta'ala is beautiful, and He loves beauty. There's nothing wrong with making ourselves presentable when we go out into the world. وَلَكِنُ الْكِبْرُ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ is that, however, what is arrogance is being obstinate when we know what's right. When we realize what's right, to, to, not, to not let go and submit to that. That's kibr. And this is from the hawa of the nafs. And the other one, ghamdunas, looking down on people, belittling other people. And this is also from the stubborn folly, from the hawa of the nafs. Because we all recognize deep in our hearts, deep in our souls that Bani Adam, we are created from the same material and spiritual elements. And the only distinguishing factor is in taqwa and piety and ethics and character. And so prejudices amongst society, this is also from the stubborn folly, the whims. When this is followed, it destroys people and it destroys societies. When the hawa, when hawa of the, of the soul is followed, it destroys people and it destroys societies. And the Prophet Wasallam apprising us out of his profound concern his his cosmic concern for the for the ummah is to is to is to fight this tendency. This is why our predecessors they focused a lot on teaching their students, teaching their pupils, teaching their disciples of the mechanisms to be aware of the nafs and the hawa and subduing these elements in the in the human being. And and the true strong one is the one that can control these elements. Abu Ali al Thaqafi, one of the early imams of our tradition, that he says, Rahimallah, that Lay say shay un awla min an tumsikahu min nafsik, wala shay a awla an taglibahu min hawak. Is that there's nothing superior to get a grip on than your ego. There's nothing better to subdue than your ego. And there's nothing better to conquer than your hawa. There's nothing better to conquer, to dominate, to have full control over than your hawa. These folly, foolish whims of the ego that stubbornly prevent the person from doing what's right. This is destructive. And the third one, that, from the, going back to the original hadith that we mentioned, that Bayhaqi relates, rahimahullah, that thalath al-muhlikat, shuh al-muta' wa hawa al-muttaba'. What's the third one? Wa i'ajab al-mar'i bi ra'ihi. When a person is impressed with his own opinion. When a person is impressed with his own opinion. This is again from the blindness of the ego. That the ego loves to be celebrated. And the ego loves to be acknowledged. And the ego loves to be applauded in whatever context the ego is in. Whether it's in the, in the great society to be the one that's applauded in, in the broader society, whether it's in one's local community to be the big shot in one's local community, whether it's in one's relatives to be the most popular amongst one's relatives, whether it's amongst one's friends to be the coolest amongst one's friends, whether it's amongst one's colleagues at work to be the one that's outstanding amongst... The, the nafs loves to be celebrated and acknowledged. And one of the diseases of the heart is ujub, is, is to be impressed with oneself. And the Prophet ﷺ specifically specifies in this narration, for a person to be impressed with his own opinion, because a lot of times it's opinions that blind us from receiving truth. The meek and humble of heart are open to truth. They, are, they most readily accept what is correct. But those that they're Vantage, their outlook is clouded by opinions, by ideology, by ideas and ideologies, then they are the least receptive to humble themselves to what is right once that truth is made clear to them. And so, ijab al bi this destroys a person. But ijab al with anything of themselves is also destructive. Arjab is destructive. 
Being impressed with oneself is destructive. And the sunnah is i'jab mar bi rabbihi. The sunnah is for the person to be impressed with their Lord. And this is one of the meanings of subhanAllah. What does the dhikr of subhanAllah mean other than being impressed and marveling at the, the, the beauty, the majesty, the glory, the perfection, the absolute dominance of Allah Azza wa Jal. We cited the hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَمِيلٌ وَيُحِبُّ الْجَمَالِ Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. In other words, wherever there's beauty in the world, the ascription goes back to Allah. Only Allah can create beauty. And that's why the believer, when they witness beauty in the world, they say, SubhanAllah. And so too then with the gifts that Allah has given them. If you find a sound opinion that you have, if you find a correct opinion that you have, if you find a, a sound, a, a, a strong intellect in your possession, then don't be impressed with the intellect or the opinion. Be impressed with the bestower of the intellect and the bestower of the opinion. Who is the creator of our faculties other than Allah? Who is the creator of our accomplishments other than Allah? Who is the creator of our uh, uh, the, every good, any good that we might have? Who is the creator of it other than Allah Azza wa Jal? And so this is uh, Abu Bakr al-Warraq, the student of Hakim al-Tirmidhi, he says, Shukr al-Ni'mah, mushahadatul minna. Shukr al-Ni'mah, mushahadatul minna. Gratitude for a blessing is to witness the favor. Gratitude for the blessing is to witness the favor, to raise our gaze above the terrestrial of me, myself, and I, and what I've accomplished as of late, and to look beyond the horizon to see, metaphorically speaking, to see the Creator, the one that transcends the creation, Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the bestower. It's only His favor. He is the manan. Azza wa Jalla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mannan. And so, i'jab al-mar'i bi rabbihi. This is what we should embrace. And this is the, of the fruits and, uh, of the fruits and, and lights of alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. The Fatiha is the Ummul Kitab. All the meanings of the Qur'an are found foundationally in the Fatiha. And the Fatiha is summated in alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. All praise is for Allah alone. Only Allah deserves praise. The lamb there, istihqaq wal mulk, who owns the praise and who deserves the praise other than Allah. Uh, every single praise belongs to Allah and He alone is deserving of it. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfirullah inna Allah ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabi Alameen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tislima khatira that one of the ironies of people that are impressed with themselves particularly their opinions or their intelligence is this is the textbook definition according to the sunnah of lack of intelligence one of the ironies of a person who's impressed with their intelligence or their opinions is this is textbook definition according to the sunnah of someone that has lacks intelligence. Because the true aqil recognizes the source of things. The true intellectual, the true, the true person of discernment and intellect is the one that recognizes the source of things. Right? If something just appears, only a fool will think that it popped out of nothing. A person of intellect, right? Every philosopher seeks the why. Where did it come from? Where, where did it come from? There has to be, you know, one of them said the principle of sufficient reason. There has to be a reason for every single occurrence. There has to, what grounds its being. And in our theology, the ground of being of everything in the cosmos is kun fayakun. It's the ontic statement of Allah to existentiate that thing. Only Allah can create. Only Allah can create. Only the eternal can create. Azza wa Jal. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the true intelligent one is the one that recognizes that their intellect is a gift from Allah. And, the, and whatever brilliance they've been gifted with is a gift, ironically, unsurprisingly, is a gift from Allah. And it's from his favor. And this is why another of our early metaphysicians, Abu Sulaiman al-Darani, rahimahullah, a great 
early Imam of Damascus, third century, he says, How can any intelligent person be impressed with their own accomplishment, with their own action? Whether action of the intellect or action of, this, of, the, of one's speech or action of one's limbs. How, how, he's, he's, he's question, it's like a strange thing for, for, the, for the Imam. How, how can an intelligent person be impressed with their own accomplishment? Because the accomplishment of any individual is nothing but a gift from Allah. And a blessing from Him that necessitates gratitude. That necessitates gratitude. And this, this is a journey that never ends. This is a journey that never ends. Because a person will realize if they are able to try to have enough wherewithal, enough sense and sensibility to start showing gratitude, that that very orientation towards Allah in gratitude is another gift from Allah. That even our gratitude is a gift from Allah. Whatever merit whether worldly or otherworldly, that we might possess, is only a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is why the narration mentions that Prophet Dawud was expressing gratitude, expressing gratitude, expressing gratitude, until he said, Oh Allah, how can I, I, how can I show gratitude when my very gratitude is another gift from you? <laughs> In other words, I just, the, the realization of ultimate gratitude is inability, is pure, absolute, non-being, non-ability, absence. <laughs> the reality of the human being is absence. The reality of Allah is presence. And the response came from Allah SWT to Prophet Dawud alayhi salam, Al-an qad shakartani. Now you've shown me gratitude. SubhanAllah. And so we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of deep gratitude. People that recognize the favor, the immense favor of Allah Azza wa Jal, of Allah Azza wa Jal in our lives in the good times and the bad times. It's all grounded in the favor of Allah. The favor of Allah is never absent from our lives. May Allah Ta'ala make us people of deep gratitude. May Allah, may Allah make us people of deep prophetic awareness. May Allah Ta'ala make us people who respond to these <coughs> teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu and his blessed inheritors in the most positive of ways. And may Allah Ta'ala make us people who do not destroy ourselves, but rather save ourselves by fighting the stinginess of our egos, by fighting the stubborn follies and whims of our egos, by being, by being people who are not impressed with ourselves, but rather impressed with Allah and His favor, and in utter gratitude and humility and servitude towards our Lord Azza wa